Hello everyone, this is Meir speaking with you. I always work on myself, but sometimes all I have is few minutes here and few minutes there. After a very long trip, and most of it very beautiful and very exciting, with many people improving as a result of it, I finally had hours and hours to work on my own self. And I started to remember how I started this very work. These days, we have whole industries around our sense of comfort or discomfort. You have back pain? Well, see the chiropractor, see the orthopedist, see the doctor that will fix it. You have headache? Take aspirin and find if it is something worse that needs to be tested. You have eye problems, wear glasses. You have hearing problems, put earphones. And I will never forget how I was able to deal with my problem, which was basically blindness. But let's return to you. First of all, I think it is so important that you will divide between destructive pain and constructive pain. Destructive pain is that one that shows you that something terrible is going on with your body. Deep abdominal pain that show that something wrong with your intestines. Chest pain that could lead to heart attack or can show you that a heart attack is in process. And all that needs medical treatment and more. But then, in 90% of the cases, if not more, it is actually that achiness, that pain, that soreness that we so much try to fix with pills and with treatment is exactly what we need to have in order to work on ourselves. So when you wake up in the morning, you may tolerate your stiffness and say, okay, I'm stiff, no big deal. I'll get looser throughout the day and I'll go to work. But maybe you shouldn't. You may have hidden pain if you put some pressure on your back. You may feel that you're sore. Or you may have, have hidden, hidden pain when you stretch and you feel how tight you really are, and how painful it is for you to stretch. And in fact, that's the pain you want to find. That's the pain you want to work on. You do not want to tolerate your stiffness. You want to work on yourself every morning so you will not be stiff that morning. And that affects the rest of your day. You don't want to have a hidden pain that is only sore to the touch, so your massage therapist or um, yourself can sense that it is sore under the surface. But actually, you want to know it exists and you want to work with it. And that's what I've done when I was nearly 17. My life changed. Instead of just depending on Braille, and reading of other people, of books, textbooks, and others, I started to work on seeing with an eye that is so damaged that no physician imagined I could see with. And I succeeded. And one of the things that I did was exercise a lot. Now, many people think exercise means what? Lifting heavier weights, swimming further running further, biking further, dancing for more hours. No, it's not. Exercise that leads to real change is actually that one that we always call warm-up. When you move the shoulder very gently and very fully and you want to have a sense of where is that shoulder stuck. I used to swim a lot, but then I would lie on the beach move and sense what my body wants. Sometimes I would almost fall asleep to the external world to just feel internally what my body needs. And that's what I'm returning to, to these days. 
when I wake up in the morning and when I have time, I sense what my body wants, what my eyes want, and move and move further and sense more. And that's what I teach in my classes, whether they're introductory and short classes or whether they're very long classes, like the training courses. I teach people how to nourish themselves, to use aches uh, not as something you get rid of, but actually something you want to feel its source and respond to it. Let's try and do an exercise or two that I love to teach. For example, start with your right arm. You move it in rotating motion and tap on your chest with the left hand. Tap and breathe deeply. As you move the arm in rotating motion, feel its restriction. Is it a little bit achy when you move it above your head and backwards? If not, it's great. But is it? If so, tap on the shoulder, close to the arm, with your left hand, and keep moving the arm in rotating motion. Now, after moving your arm in rotating motion a few times to one direction and a few times to another direction, and you can stop the program just to do it, tap with your fingertips on your thigh and say fingertips, fingertips, fingertips. Say it out loud, fingertips, fingertips. And now move the arm again thinking the fingertips are doing the action. Do you know that 80% of the people in my classes feel that the arm becomes lighter? The range becomes greater. Just focusing on the fingertips takes away a lot of tension which is in the arm. If you want to take away that tension, focus on your fingertips. Let's do exactly the same thing with the left arm. Move it in rotating motion and feel its heaviness. Feel its restrictions. Tap on the chest with the right hand and then tap on the area of the clavicle where it meets the arm with the right hand while moving the arm in rotating motion. Move it and move it and move it in both directions. Again, you can stop the program. Then turn it again, turn it on again, and then tap with your fingertips on your left thigh and say fingertips, 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 fingertips. Move the arm in rotating motion. And again, 80% of the people in my classes feel that the arm becomes lighter. And that is a very beautiful process. The more you focus on the periphery, the easier it is for the center. Even when we walk, it's wonderful to think that the feet are lifting the legs. It's not true anatomically, of course. But by thinking that way, you let go of the tension in the hip joints, in the abdomen, in the chest, and you think as if the hands are lifting the arms. This is one small example of what we can do with ourselves. So let's, let me repeat. Zero tolerance to tension means working on the source of that tension with the right stretches and the right movements. Zero tolerance to eye strain means working on the eyes with the nine principles that I describe so well in so many places. Relaxation of the eyes, adjustment to different light frequencies, looking at details, expanding the periphery. And each time it would mean something else for you. These days I work a lot with red and green glasses to create balance use between my eyes to take away the stress from them. Zero tolerance to ringing in the ears means doing exercises to prevent that. One of them is, of course, loosening the neck, because tension of the neck 
could cause ringing in the ears. Instead of living with symptoms which are considered to be trivial, not important, you want to work with them. You want to see if you bend your head too much during the day and straighten it. You want to see if you look too much at near distance, like on computer screens and letters, and look at a distance. And this is why we have our place by the beach where we look at waves regularly. So, zero tolerance to what we always tolerate will end up helping you to improve. Look at what happens in the world. The industry that fixes people's back, a hundred billion industry, doesn't really do a good job of it. The industry that fixes people's eyes sometimes helps, sometimes hurt. The industries to prevent joint disease and joint problems, well, more people die from anti-inflammatory drugs to prevent arthritic pain than from all illegal drugs put together every day. We need to start and go back to basics. And back to basics means kinesthetic awareness. Don't be fooled by programs that make you work hard to accomplish something. The accomplishment is taking care of your health. And you do it by using muscles you never used before. And you do it by discovering movements that your body needs and repeating them. And you do it with a peace of mind and time that you take for yourself. I'm so happy to share all of this with you. With much love to all of you, Meir. <music>